here we go. Alright. Oh, why is it not? I was able to see it before. Alright, good enough. So, here we go. Now we're recording. Okay, I am Michael Ellis. And in case you didn't catch my previous videos about gardening and agriculture with Organite, you'll want to head back, visit part one, part two, um, and all the little sub videos um, or sub partitions of those videos on constructing these uh, fancy uh, Organite uh, heating and crop culture devices how to construct them and pour the resin and do all the fancy uh, stuff um, for, for making them and um, ex and stuff. Um, so um, yeah, uh, so we have our device now and we're finished making them. So now here's what you do to actually use them. So, so like, so the idea so far, and I'm not going to say it does work completely because this is still experimental. So far it works. Um, I'm experimenting with them as we record this. So I, I'm not 100% sure that they actually will grow plants um, without uh, any artificial light or natural light. Um, I just moved all my plants down into the basement uh, with these devices in them. As, as I, have a I have a couple right here um, and there. and. Um, I'm going to let them go um, in the dark and see if these things actually are worth their money or putting into them. But they do keep the plants warm and they do, they are appearing to actually grow the plants at an exponential rate and um, than they would normally in nature or in a gardening or house gardening. Because they were kind of uh, situated in the middle of my house um, upstairs and uh, and the more of th these that I put in a group, the faster they appeared to grow. And um, like my clover and uh, and um, chicory uh, appeared to germinate in like a record time, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. I've never seen uh, clover and chicory um, germinate that quickly. But I did have a little tent over it, so it did uh, actually contribute to that. That did actually did contribute to it. A little uh, more because uh, I had a fungus gnat problem, so um, I think the high humidity is that ninety nine percent humidity. I think that did contribute it to uh, it germinating a little more, but um, no, um, but no, um, even my willow are sprouting and growing really really fast. So um, I do have faith that these will actually help plants grow if they if not in the dark. Um, with the aid of sunlight or artificial light, they will help plants grow exponentially fast. So, um, so we're doing the experiment of will they grow in the dark now? So, um, so we'll see if that actually works or not. But um, I have good faith that they are actually contributing to the growth of plants. Um, so here's how you do the and they're look they're like fogged over so there's like no light getting through there and they're still growing like crazy so. Um, so I'm pretty sure that, I mean, I can shine my flashlight through, and I can barely read the thermometer, um, and they're still growing, um, so, um, yeah, but they're like 99% humidity, so, so, I don't know, so we'll see, we'll see what it does, um, what, what it does in the basement, I just have one light I keep on all the time there, and there's the ceiling lights, which are on and off during the day, and, um, so we'll see how they do in the basement. Uh, that's the ultimate trial, is, um, if they can grow in the basement. Um, this light is getting out right now. I don't think this is very well. Better get a cup No, I don't have a cup myself. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I don't think this through very well. Okay, um... So we're um so yeah now we're doing the um setting up the actual um environment in which we're going to use these devices uh for growing crops. So um I should scratch myself. Um 
and my new types of paintings are dangerous. They're on the aluminum sheets, so um, actually, I should get this out of the way so I don't wreck it. Oh, always. Oh. There, I should you know, set up. Oh, get situated. It's really uncomfortable to sit like this. Okay, anyways, um, so yeah, so, start, so the things you're going to need, and starting off, you're going to need at least a planter and uh, one of these uh, fancy uh, dishes to hold the water that comes out of the planter, the bottom of the planter, or a, yeah, um, so they're bare minimum. So um, we have a, I don't know if this is five gallon or not, maybe four or three gallon um, planter. And I got the biggest one I could get. And um, then a 16 inch dish underneath to catch the water. Um, and just a clear one. Um, the cheapest one money could buy. Because, uh, you know, I just got to save money for stuff. So, um, so um, I, I actually found these things. These are really cool. They're like um, little humidity temperature sensors, and they're like, they come in a box of like 10, which is awesome, because I can put them in all my pots, so I can individually, whoa, crash, okay, so I'm just fell over, I don't know why I did, um, so anyways, um, the big numbers are humidity, which are always at 99 in my pots, because I have these tents over them to keep the fungus gnats from getting out, and um, my temperature is the little ones. So, you, so I can put one of these down on the soil, and I can get a rough estimate of the, the air temperature and the um, air humidity uh, at the base of my plants. So it doesn't tell the soil temperature, which is fine. I don't need to know that necessarily, but, um, but I can see how my devices are actually affecting the air temperature. Excuse me. So okay, so so assuming you have soil or compost or whatever you plant, your plant medium is potting soil, what have you. Highly recommend you use some type of compost or uh, potting soil mixture with uh, compost in it. Uh, just something that uh, is alive. Um, if you need to fertilize it. Um, you can use urine as long as it's not in like an area where you have a smell issue, um, or odor issue. I need to sit down. Okay. Uh, as long as it's not in an area where you are going to have an odor issue, I mean, these are going to be covered, so, but the drip trays are going to be exposed, so you don't want to use urine as a fertilizer if, if there's going to be an odor issue. These, there's, these are in a occupied area so um so you can just use uh, like miracle grow or whatever trifecta is a good one that I saw recommended by MI Gardener um um oh my bread's not in it um so yeah just a good fertilizer mixture worm castings work good compost manures um I don't want to use manures if it was indoors but, um, yeah, anything you can think of. Um, just so, just so you have a good growing medium. Um, yeah, so, you can get coconut coir if you really want to hold in the moisture. But we're going to use little plastic tents. So you can really get those uh, germinating really quickly. Uh, so we're, so we're going to place, so we, so we got our growing medium, as you can see right here. And, and we're assuming that's uh, nice and fluffy and aerated and has all sorts of good bugs and uh, stuff in it. Because we actually got this from our planters outside. Um, so they spent the summer outside with plants growing in them. So they have all sorts of good good little creatures inside uh, from nature. So, um, so it's doing pretty well. It's pretty active um, soil. It has a nice moisture content. Uh, but we'll be watering it as we put our plants, or, or as we put our seeds in. Um, so, um, so we, so we've got one device. You only need one device per bucket, but um, that's probably a good idea because uh, the more devices that you put together in in an area, the faster it seems to affect the plants. 
So it seems to have a range outside of one itself, and they seem to be linked together in such a way that they, the more you have in an area, the faster it seems to affect the growth of the plants. So okay, so we're starting with um, the device and the indicator, uh, or the measurement uh, device, and then we'll start with our seeds and everything. So, um, but uh, first I want to add, um, I had a neat, I had a fungus snap problem, and I found that the the most natural way to deal with it was a positive or, or um, beneficial nematodes. So um, so I got these bags of beneficial nematodes. I'm putting them in all of them because I had fungus gnats and I don't want to have them ever again. So I'm putting beneficial nematodes in to kill the fungus gnat eggs because they were an issue from the soil that I got outside. So I'm just putting them in just in case. Uh, that's an issue because I know they'll pop up in the future. Anything that I have brought in from outside is going to develop uh, nemato or going to develop fungus gnats. So um, I'm putting a bag of it in just in case. So, you, the, so the instructions say you put it in, water it in, and you'll have beneficial uh, nematodes in that will eat the fungus gnat eggs. So you don't have to do all that other crazy stuff that they recommend on the internet. Um, so I got those on Amazon, but you can get them from any other places. Um, there's tons of options out there. Um, I just got this little ones that come in this little brown egg, and I keep it in the fridge. Um, so I put them in all of them, the ones that had uh, fungus gnats in them any anyways. So, um, so I'm putting one in here anyways, just in case, because this did come from outside, and the other ones that I got dirt from outside had fungus gnats in them. So, okay. So now, uh, another thing I like to do with the, the growing medium is to put in beneficial um, uh, mycelia. And by beneficial mycelia, I mean mushrooms. So um, I like to put in edible mushrooms into the dirt to grow in the dirt and um, off whatever's in the dirt and bond with the plants because we know mycelia is very beneficial for the plants. They coexist with the plants. So I went online and bought some white button mushroom. I also like to use oyster mushroom and wine caps, but um, I'll be putting some spawn in for white button mushrooms. So I just dig little holes and poke them in there at random places so they get a good establishment in the soil and uh, bond with my plants and I become active mycelia in the ground. So instead of just having some random fungus that's inedible, we actually have something that we can chew on. Oh, there's a, oh, there's an ant in there. Dang. Or is that not an ant? Oh, it looks like an ant. Oh, we have little ants, too. Dang. Okay. Well, some reason we have ants in there. Okay, that was unexpected. Um, right. um, lastly, as just like a booster for uh, plant growth, um, some uh, baker's yeast. Um, I don't know. I just I just like baker's yeast for some reason. For some reason I like baker's yeast, and I'm just gonna sprinkle that into the soil and just leave it there on the surface of the soil and water it in, um, just for no apparent reason, because uh, I'm uh, just a, that kind of gardener. So um, I I hear it can boost all sorts of plant growth and stuff. So it's really cool. Okay, so we're going to start off with our favorite plant in the occult community, uh, apple trees. So, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a necromancer, so a little bit. So I do some necromancing on the side of my shamanic work, and um, and uh, I do the ghost hunting, or I, I used to do the ghost hunting thing. So um, I like apples, so um, I, I, I did a little witchcraft on, the, on, my, on my free time, so... Um, so I like apples. Apples are a good thing. Um, you know how they play out in the Bible, and um, I don't know. Apples are cool. Um, so, um, so yeah. So uh, apples um, are healthy. They store well. Um, they have a lot of uh, fructose in them. Um, I don't know. They're really healthy food. Uh, they're supposedly the um, the uh, food of the dead, and uh, 